Hello and welcome to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Devin. I'm Dan. And today we're talking about Christmas movies. Yay! Merry Christmas! Merry holidays! And happy holidays! And all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, we did things a little bit differently this week. Dan watched a movie, and I watched a movie, but they were not the same movie. Yeah. They were two different movies. <laughs> and I actually did more than I was supposed to. I watched two movies. Well, yeah, you gotta expand the universe of the yeah, movies. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Normally, I do less than the minimum, but yeah. today I did more. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so, wh- how do you want to go about this? You want to go first? Should I go first? Well, I just wanted to say, to preface what uh, I... So, I looked at a lot of lists of Christmas movies. You know, to <laughs> kind of try to find a movie... I either hadn't seen mm-hmm. or wasn't super common or maybe that Devin also hadn't seen, right? Because then it would just be like, she's like, yeah, I know that movie you're talking about already. So it was funny because like I went through list after list and it turns out I've seen a lot more Christmas movies than I thought, which I was like, Fair oh, that's enough. cool. Yeah. And uh, many of the lists always contained the same like standouts, right? Like I would say Wonderful Life and uh, like Christmas, Christmas Story. So, yeah, like all those things, right? Yeah. So I was trying to find something a little more contemporary. Scrooge. Yeah, Scrooge yeah. and stuff like that, right? So I was trying to find something a little more contemporary and then, yeah, I settled on uh, Arthur Christmas, which I had not seen. Yeah. And it's from 2011. And it was animated. Correct? And it was an animated one, yes. Uh, I wanted to do a Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, because they are... So bad that they're good, <laughs> but they're not good. <laughs> yeah. um, and like I've seen a bunch of them on cable, so I've like seen, and, and there's like a certain amount of things that happen in each of them. Like there's, <laughs> there's always like a single successful woman. There's always like misunderstood hot guy. There's some sort of overarching scheme that doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. In a lot of the Hallmark ones. Santa saves the day, or, or written, not necessarily saves the day, but the girl believing in herself usually saves the day, <laughs> and then Santa is, is there, there yeah. at some point to do something. Yeah. Um, so what I ended up settling on was The Christmas Prince from on Netflix, and which was like a made-for-Netflix, Right. and then the other movie I watched was The Christmas Prince, A Royal Wedding. <laughs> Which, is it also on Netflix? It's also oh, made like, for Netflix. Yeah. They're like one step above Hallmark Christmas made for TV movies. That was my immediate question here. Is that like, are there a bunch of these on Netflix? Like not just the one, the two that you found? Okay, so the two that I found are related. Yeah. But there are actually a lot of made for Netflix Christmas movies. Oh, yeah that I've never heard of starring people I have no idea who they are. <laughs> nice. So I'm assuming that you can, if you if you don't have cable, like I don't right now, but yeah. you're feeling that holiday after school special for adults, there's a lot of available movies on Netflix. See, I had no idea that you even had like a catalog of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was one, I didn't watch it, but it was, it was called um, A Holiday Calendar, which, um, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> but they all have names like that. The other one was The Princess Switch, where it looks like a princess and <laughs> a regular girl switch lives. Because we've never seen that before. Because it's all, you know, these Christmas movies that are made for Netflix or made for TV, they're all innovative. <laughs> they're all highly skilled filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, best actors available. But I was going to say, though, apparently the this Kurt Russell one is getting all sorts of buzz right now. Yeah, The Christmas Chronicles, yeah. which I did double check is a movie, not a series. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was, I was actually trying to decide between watching Christmas Chronicles and The Christmas Prince. Yeah, because I thought about watching it as well because I, I, I saw an article being like, it's super good and tons of downloads. And I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, and Kurt Russell. I was like, that's kind of weird. But yeah, uh, I was like, cool. He's he's Kurt Russell. <laughs> I went with The Christmas Prince just because it was more of like this terrible yeah. Christmas romance rather than like a kid. It kind of seems yeah. more like a kid friendly or family friendly. Sure. Film. And the movie I watched, of course, it was a, a family friendly movie. It was a, a produced by the same guys who do Wallace and Gromit and those kind of claymation style. Oh, nice. Things. It was, this was their animation for a, for a. One thing that I want to mention about Hallmark movies mm-hmm. is that when you're watching them, 
it's never super clear who their audience is. Yeah. Because, like, it's a romance, romantic comedy Christmas story. Mm. But so many of them involve Santa (laughs) that it makes me wonder if it's, like, if their audience is, like, stay-at-home moms who want to watch a Christmas movie, but they're worried their kids are going to wake up from a nap. Right. Like, that's the kind I was about of- to say, or yeah, like, some for some reason, not teens, but just above teen, but not, like... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and it's the same with this... Because it wouldn't be, like, edgy enough for a teen. They'd be like, eh. No, these are... There's no edges. On that's what I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, but... Are young girls or women interested in a love story involving Santa? <laughs> I do think it it's for like women my age. Sure. Like I do think it's for women thirty to forty five. Yeah. And possibly for like for for moms because mm-hmm. I I think it's one of those things where it's like it's a it's a romance but like it's not like watching a. Fifty Shades of Grey, where you're worried if your kids get up, they'll, like, <laughs> walk in on the dungeon scene. Sure. Like, that's kind of the vibe I get. Right. So I think it's meant for, like, 30 to 45-year-old moms. Sure. And that's, that's fine, then. But no, it's yeah. totally a market. But that's it's a market, just, yeah. It's, it's very... It's interesting. Well, and it's, uh, it's also... It's a whole genre of film that I didn't even know existed, because, like you said, they're mostly on TV. Yeah. Um, and they're marketed in that kind of way, where I was like, wait, and you've been telling me about some of them in the past, and they're ridiculous. They're, oh, my God. <laughs> some of the ones that I watched are just like, what? <laughs> so, I, I also feel like these, like, Hallmark movies... Because they all, and and Christmas Prince is the same thing too, where they all have an additional storyline that isn't necessarily about Christmas, it's about like saving the business or whatever, right? It kind of, like a lot of them kind of almost cozy up to like true crime almost, (laughs) like like a true crime made for TV movie. Right. They like kind of skate along that line, which makes me think it was for women my age because women my age love true crime. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. And I just didn't realize that it was a thing that like women in their 30s just want to know about grisly murders that actually happen. Yes, apparently. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, yeah, it's cool, but like. Sure, yeah. It's it's a weird phenomenon. We want really basic vanilla love stories and (laughs) grisly murders and nothing else. (laughs) And Santa. (laughs) And Santa. (laughs) (sighs) Cool. Who wants, do you want to go first or should I go first? So yeah, like I said before, the movie I watched, Arthur Christmas, 2011. What's the premise? I've never even heard of it. I have heard of it, but I don't remember. Yeah, I knew like very little going into this movie. And then, so it was basically, it was about... The family that lives at the North Pole, they are the Clauses. Okay. And Arthur Claus is the son of the current Santa Claus. Ooh. But he's the second son of the current Santa Claus. Oh. And so the current Santa Claus, it starts the movie... Wait, isn't this Fred Claus? I don't know. I'm pretty sure Fred Claus had the same premise. Oh, really? No, well, this gets more interesting because okay. it's the grandfather character as well, who was oh. the previous Santa Claus is still alive. Okay. And then it's like the current Santa Claus is out doing his mission... And he, it's his 70th year being Santa Claus. Okay. So everyone's expecting he's going to step down, give it to the first son, whose name is Steve. Actually voiced <laughs> by Hugh Laurie. Oh, nice. And so he's Steve Claus. And he's, like, revolutionized Christmas delivery. And, like, they fly in this, like, super spaceship that has, like, cloaking technology. <laughs> and they use, like, the elves are all, like, militaristic, like, commandos. It's actually a pretty good opening scene where they're, like, showing them delivering all the gifts and everything. It's all, like, military precision and everything. Nice. And they work out of this, like, huge... And mm, Steve has developed all this? Yeah, Steve's okay. developed all this. And they work out of this, like, huge NASA command center, basically. <laughs> and there's, like, big screens everywhere. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and then when he gets back, he was like, oh, you know what? No, I'm still a good Santa. I'm going to keep doing it again. <laughs> right? Yeah. And Arthur Claus is just kind of like... He's like the mad. He's just about the spirit of Christmas. He answers letters from children. Huh? Yeah, and so he's all like, "Oh, everything's going well and great and everything." And so what happens is, for some accidentally, a button gets pressed, and then one of the gifts gets shunted off of like its conveyor belt, 
and they didn't deliver a gift to a girl. <sighs> so Arthur is like, well, this is terrible. Like, we, we, we got to fix this. And then Steve is like, no, it's okay. It was just one kid. It, you know, things happen. Yeah. <laughs> and the current Santa Claus is like, oh, you know, Steve's right. He's, he's always, like, uh, right about everything and et cetera. But Arthur's like, no, we got to fix this. So his grandfather is like, hey, on the DL, I saved my old sleigh when it was supposed to be just demolished. Yeah. So he's got the old sleigh. And they go on an adventure to go deliver the gift. Aww. But then it turns out everybody but Arthur essentially has like an ulterior, almost selfish motive. Oh. And yeah, the story was actually like pretty like interesting. Yeah, just at this moment, yeah. this is a more um, <laughs> in well, a more interesting story than the princess. Princess. <laughs> Fuck, what's the it? Christmas prince or whatever. I keep trying to say the princess Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Different movie. Yeah, no, it was totally different than I was expecting because it wasn't just super simplistic. And, yeah. and so they go on this journey and then it turns out like granddad wants to do it using the old sleigh to prove that the old methods are still good and he can show them up, then show the young guys up. Yeah. And then Steve didn't want to do it because he was like didn't want to take the blame for like one gift being delivered because the dad was like I'm still going to be Santa he's like well you're still Santa you deal with it kind of thing right but yeah. Arthur was like no it's about this he just wants to deliver the gift he's like that child just wants her her bike <laughs> right? yeah yeah so yeah so they go through some wacky adventures they they do some good stuff where because they were she lives on I think it's Mimosa Street or okay. something or Something like that. Anyway, so they end up in Mexico, <laughs> right? So England, where they're supposed to go, and then he they encounter like a guy when they need to take his reindeer sign, and then uh, Arthur distracts him, and he looks like an alien and stuff like that. <laughs> and then as they're taking off, they catch some lights, and so it looks like a UFO taking off. Nice. And then they end up on the news eventually, like how there's a UFO who's like traveling around the world. <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, they uh, they eventually all get there because. Current Santa's like, you know what? He was right. We should try to help him deliver the gift. So he gets in the S1. It's called the big ship. Mm -hmm. And Steve uh, goes as well. And so does, uh, I forget her name. Her name. It's like uh, the current Santa's wife. Okay. I think it's like, it's not Martha, but it starts Mrs. with Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Claus, I guess, at the time, <laughs> at, at this moment. Yes. Uh, so they go. Uh, basically, what happens is at the end, or as Steve makes the same mistake, they end up in Mexico and he's yes. trying to deliver the bike and he's got it like a new kind of like slick uh, cut Santa suit nice. and it's like an actual like three piece suit <laughs> and uh, he's like you know we made a mistake here's the new gift blah blah and he's like but we upgraded you because it's the better one and he's like if you'll sign this release form just saying that you're okay with it everything will be fine <laughs> and then it's like a, the Mexican kid and he's like oh no and he's trying to like wrestle this bike away and then like the, the little chihuahua dog attacks him <laughs> classic yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. but they end all up in England and they deliver the gift and Arthur's like, oh, can't we just, like, watch, you know, because normally they always leave. And so they watch the kid getting the gift, and then there's, like, the nice spirit of Christmas stuff. And this current Santa realizes, like, he's like, I shouldn't be Santa anymore. And he tells Steve, he's like, but I don't think you should be Santa either. It should be Arthur. Yeah. And so Arthur becomes the new Santa, and Steve remains, like, the behind-the-scenes command center right. running guy, essentially. Oh, and cool. everybody has, it's actually got a nice positive message at the end. And there's there's some good scenes and there's some good stuff with the elves because they're all there. There was a great thing because the elves go to the current Santa at one point. They're like, we heard you, like a child got missed. That's yeah. never happened. It's horrible. And then he's like, well, it's okay. You know, it was only one. It was a very small percentage. If you talk to Steve, it'll make sense. And, then, <laughs> and they kind of shut the door and the elves are like, one kid doesn't matter. Nothing matters. <laughs> it's basically, that's like, there's, there is a no God kind of moment. And then when they all leave in the S1 to go like, they're all like, they're abandoning the North Pole. <laughs> and then they press this button and it's like this big thing comes up and it's like self-destruct 10 minutes and they initiate the self-destruct and they're just like abandon the North Pole <laughs> it's pretty good oh, that's awesome. so yeah it was very enjoyable I was surprised by the cast um, but it didn't also shock me because of the fact that it was made by like the same guys who make Walsh and Gromit because James McAvoy did Arthur Aww. same as the X-Men uh, Xavier now yeah. and he's been a ton of other stuff and Hugh Laurie well, like I said with Steve Bill Nye was the grandfather oh I love uh, Bill Nye yeah Jim Broadbent uh, which if you don't recognize his voice he was Slughorn in the Harry Potter oh, movies oh okay yeah, yeah yeah he's been in a ton of stuff for sure um and then there was also Laura Linney was the computer voice and... Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Box office. So this was a 3D animated movie. Oh. Back when, in 2011, 3D animation was still kind of new. Yeah, but was that pre or post 
Avatar. Ooh, I want to say... I think it was... I want to say... Post. Yeah, I don't know. It was definitely post Polar Express, because that was really early, right? Right. So... I've never seen it, have you? No. <laughs> you don't want to watch Uncanny Valley, guys? No, I didn't want to watch Uncanny, Uncanny Valley, the movie. <laughs> and so, uh, it didn't do as well, I don't, I don't know. It was approximately $100 million to make. Only in the U.S. it grossed forty six million overall, though it did one forty seven. So, but you got to think the marketing costs always cost a ton, right? It's yeah. Usually always double production is kind of like the benchmark. So it might not have made money, but the critics um, really liked it. It had ninety two percent Rotten Tomatoes. It's funny because I seventy six from people. Oh, okay. So it was like highly rated. I vaguely remember the trailers. Mm. And I think they made it look like a very loud movie. Yeah. And it turned me off it. But your description of it made it sound good. Yeah. I, like I said, I was pleasantly surprised and enjoyed the watch. And I was like, wow, this was a nice little like Christmas story. It was definitely a little more kitty oriented because uh, like a lot of the wacky adventures would be more kitty humored. Like they end yeah. up in Africa and they get like surrounded by lions. And then there's like a wacky, you know, scene where they're trying to escape the lions and stuff like that. Right. But it was still it was an enjoyable watch. And I like, like I said, I actually really liked liked the story premise. Yeah, it sounds kind of cute. Actually. Yeah, and I was like, this is actually some good stuff here. <laughs> it was cool. it was a neat take because I like the opening shot they do kind of uh, they're panning down a hallway and it shows like all of the clauses or all the Santa clauses mm-hmm. and like the years that they were Santa Claus essentially. Um, so it's oh, like, that's like cool, yeah, it yeah. goes way back to like the 1500s and like the 1300s. And yeah, you can just see the tradition kind of going. And I was like, wow, this, it, like I said, it was far better than I was expecting. And I, how was the animation? Well, it, it's like if you've seen any of those Wall like Wallace and Gromit's and stuff like that. It's basically they take a similar style but animated in computer 3D. So can I, sorry, I want to look up what this looked like. Sure. Like, it, so because though it was animated and it was 3D animated, Mm -hmm. the animation was consistent. Like, so it wasn't terrible, I don't think, but it was just kind of like some things looked a little like stylized or just the way they wanted to animate it essentially, right? So it wasn't like true, like the lions, especially I'm thinking like they were mostly all like square jawed and et cetera, right? So, and that was all fine. It was, it was good. good. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm just looking up a poster so that I could... Sure, and like I said, uh, all the characters look very much like straight out of like a, like a Wallace and Gromit kind of thing. Totally. But in a computer it animated style. It looks a tiny bit like um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which I really enjoyed. I very much. Out. Yeah. That was an enjoyable movie. I never saw the sequels, but I, I definitely enjoyed either, the first one. I never saw but I, from, from what I've heard, the sequel is as good, if not better, than the first one. Really? Yeah. Oh. But I didn't watch it. Yeah, me neither. The first one was really good. Yeah, I really liked it, too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like I said, Arthur Christmas, it was it was really good, and I would recommend watching it, especially if you got some chill, some kids. Because, yes and no, because, again, it's like there's not a lot of, like, say, slapstick stuff. Like, there's mm-hmm. a, a few, but I don't know what kind of, like, jokes would be good for children, essentially, right? Like, okay. what makes kids laugh? I don't these know. These days. It, it, cause, I don't understand the youth of today. Yeah. <laughs> no, like the animation is nice and etc. And like there but there's like a scene there's like <coughs> character scenes where it's not funny, like the dialogue might reveal a joke, but there's no like I think the kid would uh, laugh at like the elves like you were describing. Yeah, the elves are pretty funny, yeah. Um and like the chihuahua scene that you described. Yeah. I think they'd laugh at that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and, uh, yeah, because there's, in the first time they go to Mexico, Arthur's wearing these ridiculous Christmas slippers, and, uh, <laughs> like, they're all furry and with these googly eyes and stuff like that, and then the, when he's trying to deliver the bike, uh, he uses, like, his slipper to kind of distract the dog, and then the dog really likes the slipper, Aww. and then as he's leaving, the dog's, like, at the window, and he's just, like, lifts up the window, gives him the slipper, and he's like, happy Christmas, <laughs> and like, <leaves. laughs> Yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, very would be cute for the kids, but... Uh, I think if any of the elves say something loud, the mm. kids would, re- would just <laughs> repeat it for a long time. I think that's how children work. Well, in the main... Like with the minions. Yeah. You know? The main elf in the that tags along in the journey with him, she has a Scottish accent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> again, it's an English production, so... So they probably just do that. Or, uh, or Scottish or Irish, anyway. Not totally. Uh, it's hard to tell because it's not like the harsh, like, 
you know, oh, so it's just, harsh accent, but and it's yeah. not like the total Irish lilt. It's somewhere in the middle. So it's probably like normal talking okay. to some for someone in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas okay. us, it sounds like some sort of weird accent. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the same as like James McAvoy. Like I couldn't tell it was him, but I think that's probably his just own voice. Okay. He also has an accent because yeah. it's from there. So. Wait, wasn't he in Split too? Yes, he was in Split. What if Arthur Christmas, all the characters <laughs> were just his personality? Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Huh. So I don't know. I mean, there. I don't know. There's not much more. I don't think to say. Like, because it wasn't. Like I said, it wasn't terrible, and I did would enjoy you watching. Watch it again. Like, would it become a Christmas classic for you, where you watch mm. it every year or every yeah, like couple I, years? Yeah, like Nightmare Before Christmas kind yeah. of thing. I don't know. If you, it's had... de- I was about to say, like, my immediate answer is not yes. Okay. Where I was like, like, like a night before Christmas, where I like literally right. watched it every year because I was or, like, that was um, amazing. The Netflix special, Very Merry Christmas, which I watched. Oh yeah, nice. Have you seen it? <laughs> Not yet, no. It's a Bill Murray Christmas special, and I've watched it. I think I for it. like the past three years, I watch it every year. And I think you've mentioned that I should watch it. Yes, it's really good. <laughs> Um, so, but I don't know. I mean, I could if, see maybe if you had children. Yeah. Like I don't know how you got them, but if I had some children, if over, you had some children, would yeah. you watch Arthur Christmas? Sure. Would that be like? Yeah. Or would you pick a different movie over it? Like, let's say you had um, mm. no, well, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a nine-year-old. Well, I was gonna say, or if it's like we got these these kids over and maybe they haven't seen it before. And I would totally turn it on for them yeah. and be like, oh, check out this Christmas movie. It's pretty good. <laughs> right, so, so you wouldn't be like, oh, little Timmy's coming over. I'm totally going to queue up Arthur Christmas for him. Well, I would find out whether or not they've seen The Nightmare Before Christmas first. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Because <laughs> that is the ultimate Christmas movie, <laughs> which I think we mentioned in our last year's Christmas that's, episode. <laughs> yeah. What if they were like six and they were too young for Nightmare? That's not too young for you. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> There's too young for Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> Bring on the fear, yeah. child. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like I said, Nightmares. I, I would definitely turn it on for a younger audience. I just don't know how young would be too young for the movie to not, like, hold their attention in a sense. Because, like, like okay. I said, like, there's... It's bright and colorful. You could probably yeah. put it on for a baby. Yeah, it's very bright and colorful. <laughs> but, that, like I said, there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of dialogue, but there's... The dia- like there, there's a lot of dialogue while they're like doing something like they're on the sleigh and they're flying around but there's like some good character moments in there it's not just purely hey we're on the sleigh having an adventure right, kind of right. so yeah I like I said I was pleasantly impressed <laughs> alright should I talk about sure. mine now? Let's, let's move on to... Or do you want to keep talking about it? No, I don't, like I said, I don't know if there's anything really much else I could say aside from... Uh, Did you have a favorite scene? Clearly not enough people saw the movie. The elf scene? Or freaking out? The elf scene freaking out was pretty good. No, I was going to say, when they first leave the North Pole, yeah. they end up in a city and he doesn't know exactly where it is, and then they start looking at some maps or whatever, and he's like, oh, we're in Toronto. He's like, oh, yes, the clauses always come through Toronto or through Canada. He's like, no one lives there. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> But Did you? Was, was there any part of the movie that you think could have been cut? No, I don't think so. Not right now. I mean, cool. Like there was, you know, if you wanted to like trim it down, you could take out a couple of like their stops where they had, like like say they end up in Africa and here yeah. and there. Like that could have maybe been trimmed out, but it was it was it was all good. I think everything was good in there. Cool. Yeah. All right. I mean, it was only like an hour and thirty minutes, so it wasn't like two hours long and I was yeah. like oh my god this is just dragging out <laughs> do you know what else was an hour and 30 minutes the Christmas Prince excellent <laughs> segue yeah so I watched the Christmas Prince uh, on Netflix as you mentioned yeah so here's the story yeah first of all before I get into it because this is gonna get sarcastic <laughs> <laughs> um, I did appreciate that they rented locations and shot in real sets and real rooms. Right. It wasn't just green screen with a couple chairs. So that, uh, <laughs> they deserve props for that. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if they rented out a hotel or what they did, but right. it was um, obviously not a green screened room. That's good. So there we go. <laughs> that, that's a positive to start with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So this movie... I'll tell you the okay. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you the plot. Tell us the story. And the I plot took here. notes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So afterwards, we'll go through my notes. Sure. Amber is our main character. All right. She is a journalist that is underappreciated, <laughs> but she's very smart. Yeah. Her boss gives her an assignment. 
to go to a made-up European country for a press conference because their king has died and the prince is going to now be crowned king sure. on Christmas Eve. Long live the king. <laughs> yeah. She goes to made-up country. <laughs> And as she's getting into a cab, some guy with a beard and sunglasses steals her cab and she calls him a jerk. (laughs) This is important for later. (laughs) No. (laughs) She gets to the castle for the press conference and it has been canceled. The guy, the prince, Mm -hmm. didn't show up. Wait, so she's there on Christmas Eve already? Uh, or is it like pre-Christmas Eve? It's like a couple days before okay. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. So the press conference was before Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, oh, okay. I guess I should specify. There's a lot of information that gets thrown <laughs> at you in the first 10 minutes of this movie. So I'm missing some stuff. Sure. He has a re- reputation as a party boy, playboy who dates a lot of women. Hmm. And he's been waffling about abdicating from the throne. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Intrigue. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We get to the castle for the press conference, which is a few... Oh, and then before she left, talked to her dad because her mom is dead Mm. and her dad owns a diner. And she was like, should I do this? It'll be my big break. (laughs) And her dad's like, yeah, follow your heart. Your mom told me to follow my heart and that's why I have a diner. Sure. So even though we won't be together on Christmas, I still love you and whatever. Sure. So she goes to made up country. I think it's called Anchovia or something. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> she goes to made up country. She gets there in time for the press conference, and it's about. I believe it's like four days before Christmas. Right. Okay. So there's some time. Before yeah. The coronation and stuff. Yeah. She goes to the press conference. They're Sean Spicer. I don't know what what's he called? Press secretary? No, oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, right? That's sure. what Sean Spicer was, right? I don't know. For he was for Trump? Spicy? No. No, I, I don't I haven't been following his press secretaries. It's, it's, except for the current one who lies all the time. Sarah Huckabee. Sarah Huckabee. <laughs> yeah, so they Anchovy is Sarah Huckabee. Yeah. <laughs> is like Press camp, camp Brits canceled. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and then the press is mad, but they all leave except for plucky young journalist. Yeah, uh, except for Amber. Amber. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no, I need the story. So she just, after all the press leave in buses, she just walks back into the palace and starts taking pictures with her phone. Sure. And then one of the, and by the way, we're still in the first ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she comes across a servant-ish guy mm-hmm. or dude that works there. I don't know what to call him. Some steward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, who are you? And she's, or she's like, oh, I'm, so, I don't know. He's like, what are you doing? And she's like, sorry. And he's like, oh, you're American. You must be the young princess's tutor. Margaret Tudor. <laughs> sure. And she's like, yes. <laughs> and he's like, okay, great. Um... Let's go get you settled. And then she's introduced to the housekeeper, and the housekeeper is like, you're not supposed to be here till the first. Ah. And she's like, I came early, sorry. And she's like, oh, it's a huge inconvenience, but we'll work it out. <laughs> you start work today. And, and, and no one has, has seen a picture of what this tutor was going to look like? <laughs> no. Okay. This, this, this country has a really lax security yeah. <laughs> for their crown prince. Sure. So, um, then she's, she has a brief tele or a Skype call with her boss and her boss is like, get all the pictures. Amber's like, are you sure this is legal? And her boss is like, you won't go to prison for that long. Get the story. It's your big break. And she's like, it's my big break. Yeah. (laughs) So she's introduced to the queen and the princess. It's kind of. The housekeeper sets up the princess to be this terrible person. Sure. Was ratty like, child. Or something. Ratty child. Yeah. She put a mouse in the former tutor's bed. <laughs> She's the most evil princess ever. So she gets introduced to the queen and the princess. And guess what? Bearded sunglasses man is there. And it turns out he's the crown prince. Oh, no. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> and he's like, you called me a jerk. And she's <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, your majesty. And then she... 
bumps into a very expensive phase <laughs> and breaks it. Oh, snap. Yeah. This is a recurring theme. It's got nothing to do with the plot. I guess it's to give her character. Sure. She's clumsy. She's clumsy. It happens at least three times <laughs> in the movie. She starts tutoring the little girl. The little girl is in a wheelchair. She has spinal bifida. Mm. Our tutor, Amber, journalist lady, yeah. is like... First of all, this little girl's doing math that she doesn't understand, so she's like, let's do English. And the little girl's like, why are you pitying me? Because I'm in a wheelchair? <laughs> Poor little rich girl. That's what you think of me. And Amber's like, no, you're, I, I don't, you're not crippled. You're a nice girl. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> and they <laughs> instantly become best friends. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the girl was never a brat. Yeah. At all. <laughs> She's actually a very sweet girl. <laughs> um, they go outside. The prince is doing archery and he's shaved. And he's like not hitting bullseyes, but he's doing pretty good. And then she's like, wow, you're actually handsome. I mean, oh, <laughs> oh I'm going over my words. Whatever. And then the wheelchair girl, for some reason, uses the bow and arrow and... It hits a bullseye. Oh, she's got skills. Yeah, and then they're like, you should try too. And then she, the Amber, yeah. um, fucks up really bad and ends sure. up shooting an arrow into a priceless work of art that's inside <laughs> the palace. As you do. As you do. <laughs> yeah. Schemes start happening at this point. Right. The true crime part of the, of the stories. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> the crown prince has a cousin who's next in line for the throne. By the way, at this point, the princess and Amber are best friends. Yeah. Just in case we missed that. So every family gathering, every ball, every stately dinner, Amber's now invited to. Just so we're clear. Yeah. Turns out the cousin is the next in line for the throne. And he is this greasy, schemy guy. There's also another lady Mm -hmm. who... Seems to like the prince and wants to get married to him. Sure. But there's some tension there. (laughs) Anyways, there's this random scene where they're decorating the Christmas tree and they're talking about how the king used to make handmade carved wooden ornaments for the tree. And they spend a long time talking about it. And the cousin's a douche and he's like, this doesn't look like an elephant. It looks like a panda or some stupid thing. Yeah, right. (laughs) And they focus a lot of attention on it, so I'm like, oh, I bet I know what's going to happen. Hang on. Pause Mm. up for a second. New lady gives the crown prince a very um, fancy-looking heart ornament that's all, like, silver and filigree. Mm. And she's like, you need to hang it on the tree, but be gentle with it. (laughs) (laughs) So they focus all this attention on these handmade ornaments. Sure. And I'm like, oh, okay, I know what's going to (laughs) happen. Journalist is going to end up making an ornament for the prince, or the prince is going to make an ornament for her, and it's not going to be very good, but it's going to be touching because his father used to do it. Right. That doesn't happen. (laughs) (laughs) The movie was dumber than you gave it credit for. But we do come back to the ornaments later Ah. for a very stupid reason. Excellent. (laughs) Anyways, plot progresses. We get some romantic scenes-ish. Princess and Amber go on a toboggan ride. The prince shows up. Mm. They have a snowball fight. And then he falls on her. And they're like, oh. (laughs) They don't actually kiss or anything, though. And then when they get back, the queen's like, where have you been all day? And next time, please invite me to go tobogganing, because this is the first time I've seen my daughter smile. It's really stupid. The whole movie's really stupid. I can't stress how stupid it is. Yeah. Other stuff I'm sure happens, but I don't remember it. Prince goes on a horse ride. Yeah. Amber follows him because she wants to get her big scoop. But now she's starting to feel guilty because she realizes that these are all real people. Yeah. She lied her way in. Also, before this happens, the princess reveals to Amber that she knows that Amber isn't the the nanny Um. or the tutor, that she's actually a journalist because she broke into her, like the princess broke into Amber's computer. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, I don't care. I just want you to be my friend. She's not mad, not betrayed at all. (laughs) She's like, I just want you to be my friend and I'd like you 
to, if you're going to write something, write something nice about my brother. Because he's not the asshole that you guys put in the paper. Right. Oh, there's so much happens in this movie. It's hard to keep track. There's also a scene where they go to a fundraiser for the orphanage and he's supposed to talk but he's not there and then they go and they find out that he's just playing with the orphans right in the yard playing sure instead of doing speech yeah he's having fun yeah and he's like his mom gets mad and he's like i thought my thing was to make the orphans feel better not talk to some stupid people just like you have to balance it anyways fuck all that (laughs) he goes on a horse she follows him on a horse sure I think I was looking at my phone, but somehow a wolf attacks. Oh, snap. (laughs) He comes out and shoots a gun in the air, and the wolf runs away. Sure. And he takes her to a hunting cabin in the woods. They have a moment, but they don't kiss. Mm -hmm. He gives some exposition about not wanting to be king or whatever. He finds it, shows her a poem that his dad wrote for his mom. This is important. Yeah, sure. Don't forget about it. <laughs> he then does something, goes to the bathroom, goes outside or whatever, and she finds a drawer with a false bottom. Oh, snap. That is full of papers. When we get back to the castle, we find out that those papers reveal that he is not their biological son oh. for the king and queen, and that he's actually adopted. Oh, snap. Now, I don't remember why, but the cousin and the scheming lady... Oh, sorry. When they're in the cabin, the prince reveals that the lady that wants to marry him sold pictures of them together to the tabloid. Uh And she only wants to marry him because she wants to be queen. Sure. But the cousin has the hots for scheming lady. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So they break into Nanny's or Tudor Amber's room. Mm. They find the papers, and then it's the Christmas Eve ball. Oh. There's a brief makeover scene <laughs> at some point sure. where she gets fancied. <laughs> she comes down the stairs like Cinderella. <laughs> Everybody stops to stare at her. Prince is like, wow, she's pretty. <laughs> they dance and stuff, and then it's like his time to be crowned prince and she's feeling really guilty at this point and then they get to a point where in the in the ceremony they're like basically like he shall be or if you have any reason for him not to be crowned prince <laughs> speak now or forever hold your yeah, peace yeah. like a, the wedding thing yeah, yeah. like it's, it's so dumb and then cousin's like he's adopted yeah and then the queen's like it's true and he's like, how did you find those? And they're like, Tudor is actually a journalist. So she leaves, mm-hmm. same thing. That'd be standard. And she cries. Those kind of stories, yeah. Like, like fight? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, she's about to get on the plane. She's talking to her dad. Her dad says something. It reminds her of the poem. Cousin. And, and during this... The prince finally decides that he actually wants to be king. Yeah, because he's like, I can help people or something. Yeah, now that he can't be king. Yeah. <laughs> the cousin and scheming lady get married. Mm-hmm. They call for the court of fancy people to get together because he has to be crowned by midnight on Christmas Eve or else. <laughs> <laughs> Reasons. Yeah, yeah. They are about to crown him. Oh, and then they had to wait for the queen to get there because the queen has to be there. So she gets there. She's like, I don't want him to be king. I want my adopted son to be king. Mm. He's the best suited for it. And he was like a son to us. And they're like, no. And by the way, it's glossed over that the princess is the biological daughter of the oh, prince, of yeah, the yeah. king and queen, but that it can only be a male heir. I was going to say, male heir. Yeah, Pretty which is stupid. Classic stuff, yeah. Which we're gonna get to. <laughs> Anyways, he's about to get crowned, and while all this is happening, Amber gets to the palace, convinces them to let her in, goes to the tree with the ornaments because she figures out the one that looks like an acorn, which we never got a close up of. <laughs> P.S. Yeah. Opens it up finds that the king wrote a law in secret oh. and he hid it in the acorn for reasons. Sure. 
and was going to give the acorn with the law and the poem to the queen last Christmas, but he died right before he could. Right. It's really, really dumb. <laughs> so she shows up and she's like, no, law, thing. And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, thing. <laughs> and then cousin's like, no, I'm going to get lawyers and we're going to fight this, me and my wife who are in love. And she's like, you better get a divorce lawyer. <laughs> She literally says that. (laughs) So they leave. Guy's current king. Amber fucks off back home to New York. Sure. She's working at the diner Christmas Eve. Her friends are like, come out with us. And she's like, no, I'm going to help my dad. And then the king shows up two minutes before midnight and proposes. And she accepts. And then they have their first kiss. Oh, it's not. Cut to credits. (laughs) They do not kiss the entire movie. Yeah. So, it's bad movie. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Sure. It's well lit. It's well filmed. They use real sets. Yeah. The soundtrack isn't distracting. So, there's stuff going for it. And at least it's a logical progression. Yeah. It made more sense in Fantastic Beasts, <laughs> The Crimes of Grindelwald. <laughs> no, I was just thinking about that when you were just saying that, how it was like... It's like the craft of filmmaking now and television making, but let's say filmmaking because we're talking about movies, that it's like we've gotten to a point where it's all so good that yeah. it's noticeable when it's bad. For sure. Like when special effects are bad, you notice, or when the filmmaking is bad, you notice, shots that are focused, you notice, but when everything's good, yeah. it, or the, the, the craft is so well dialed in now that everything should be good, even on a bad production. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. No, so all of that was fine. It was just, yeah. it was a shish script. That's where you usually may have movies are failing these days, is in the script or yeah. the story structure, and then you're like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, like, it felt like a rip-off of the Princess Diaries plus Christmas movie yeah. equals Because you were telling me briefly about it yesterday, and I was yeah. like, haven't I seen this? Like, I was like, doesn't this movie exist? And you're like, yeah, it's like the Princess Diaries. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> it's not even the Princess Diaries. It's a Princess Diaries 2. Yes. But reversed, because in the Princess Diaries, she's the royal... Right. That has to find a husband. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. And also Anne Hathaway's character is super clumsy. So I think they made this character clumsy <laughs> to, like, reminisce about it. Like, sure. the names of the made-up European countries sound very similar, too, because it, in Princess Diaries, it's, like, Moldovia. Oh, really? And in this one, it's Andovia. <laughs> like, they're very similar. Sure. Or Aldovia or something like that. And I think they did it on purpose because... People my age would have seen Princess Diaries when they were in their late teens. Sure. And they're going to like it. (laughs) Um, I'm going to try to do a more condensed summary of the second one. Sure. Because I'd like to talk about it because I have some predictions. Uh. Because I feel like Christmas Prince came out last year. Christmas oh. Prince Royal Wedding came out this year. So I have predictions oh, for there's, future there's movies. Oh, there's going to be potentially a third? Yeah. Oh. So Royal Wedding, they're going to get married. They've hired a, a wedding... Planner type person. Planner. A bad stereotype wedding planner. And then the, pr- the former housekeeper is now the press secretary. Right. So they are overwhelming her with traditional things that they have to do. Right. Made up traditions for this country. Or, yeah. Made up yeah. traditions for this country right. for her wedding, protocols and stuff like that. Yeah. And also, so at the end of, I, I forgot to say, but at the end of the second movie, or at the end of the first movie, she left her job. I was about to say, yeah, their journalism, yeah. And started a blog. Oh, okay. So they're also trying to censor her blog because she wants to blog as the queen of this country, I guess. Sure. The king is super preoccupied with kingly shit. There's also a third, uh, the princess is in a play, and she's going to kiss a boy for the first time in the play. Mm -hmm. There's an overarching story. Sorry, before you totally continue, do they get all the same cast? Yes. Okay. Except Uh for Amber's dad. Oh, okay. But he was a minor part in the first movie anyway. Yeah, but he's like a completely different build, a completely different height. (laughs) Nice. And at one point, the princess is like, you look different than you did in your pictures. And then Amber's like, yeah, he shaved his goatee for the wedding. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Yeah, but everybody else is the same. Okay, cool. So she's going to be in the play, though, sorry. Yeah. There's an overarching plot. So the overarching plot 
beyond the wedding that they're preparing for, which is going to be on Christmas Day because this country is obsessed with Christmas. Sure. <laughs> the king is trying to modernize Anchovia. <laughs> It's an initiative that was started by his father, but I guess put on hold for a year after his father died. Yeah. The initiative, he wants to put more money into the country through movie magic, I suppose. (laughs) (laughs) But this money that they keep putting into it keeps disappearing. The unions are all on strike and people are using their, losing their jobs and all these like, Anchovian companies are mm. shutting down. Oh no. They don't know why. Interesting. Yeah. It actually ends up being like a little bit of an interesting plot in this oh, one. Yeah. Amber keeps trying to help, but the prince is like, no, you worry about the wedding. I keep hearing that you're occupied with the wedding. Let me deal with Anchovia business. Sure. And she keeps trying to have private time with him, but he's always busy. So the mother brings the father's former advisor to help with the situation. He comes about halfway through the movie and he's super nice (laughs) and friendly. Yeah. It's just nice guy, Steve, (laughs) come to help. The cousin shows up, the one that left. Yeah, the previous movie. He has no money. Oh no. And he apologizes to Richard and Richard is like, it's family and Christmas, so you're fine. And he's trying to get him to invest in cryptocurrency to help out the country. (laughs) Nice. And when he was first on screen, I did not recognize him, and I watched those movies back to back. Nice. So the scheme turns out through... Oh, and okay. Sorry, one more thing before I get into the finale here. The princesses... Sh- uh, play get canceled because oh, no. the theater union closes it down. Right. So they end up doing it at the palace oh, and she yes. gets to kiss the boy. It's a problem that comes up and is resolved five minutes later. Nice. Yeah. The best kind. The best <laughs> kind. Yeah. It seems like a big deal and then it's not. Yeah. As a subplot, this has nothing to do with like the overall thing story. Amber's dad because he has a diner, befriends the castle's head chef. Right. And she, like, starts him off washing dishes and moves them up through the ranks, and then he teaches her how to cook diner food. I'm sure. It's... <laughs> it's there. It's there. <laughs> it's, 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 key, it's key at runtime. <laughs> yeah. Her two friends from the first movie come over. It's like... Sassy black friend and sassy gay friend. All right. So they come over. They're like, let's do a bachelorette party. And she's like, no, we got to investigate this mm-hmm. because reasons. Yeah. So she goes and talks to the people. And then Princess turns out to be a hacker. Well, yeah, she hacked the movie. She hacked in the last one, right? Yeah. Hacked the laptop. Hack, 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 hack. Hacked the planet, yeah. And what they find out is that three companies have gotten all of the contracts, Mm. the extra money in Anchovia, and that those three companies are owned by a parent company called Glockenspiel, (laughs) which isn't even based in Anchovia. And then it turns out that Friendly Steve, Oh no. Which I don't think that was his name, but that's what (laughs) we're calling him, owns Glockenspiel. What? What? Never saw a Vizier character being evil. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, Amber and Rich, Amber and Prince have a fight. Sure. She leaves. He goes, gets her, apologizes. He's like, you were right the whole time. Mm. They confront him, and then they get married. Oh, they confront him, and then she's like, listen, this is my wedding. Fuck protocol. I don't want to wear your ugly dress. I'm yeah. going to wear my ugly dress. <laughs> And then they get married. Oh, okay. And everybody is happy. Yay. And there's a dis- Except for the country populace. <laughs> no, because in his Christmas Day speech, the prince is like, we found out what the problem was. Uh-huh. Y'all are getting your jobs back. And also Christmas bonus. So the populace <laughs> likes him now. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's basically how that happened. Yeah, that Bitcoin money when it got to 16K. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cryptocurrency is never talked about. Oh, okay. <laughs> so at the end of this movie... Prince and Amber are married. Yeah. Princess has her little boyfriend from the play. Right. Dad and Lady Chef 
are course, yeah. implied to be in cahoots. Yeah, yeah, some sort of couple forming there. Black friend and cousin are hooked, are, are, are oh. a couple. Mm. Sassy gay friend and uh, stereotype wedding planner are a couple. Right. And then when Amber throws her bouquet, the queen catches it. Oh, snap. <laughs> so here are my predictions. <laughs> Those, the second one was yeah. worse than the first one, but all the things that were good about the first one are good about the second one. Right. So here's my predictions. Because Netflix got this money train rolling. They're going to make the next one. Though. So the next one is going to be A Christmas Prince... The royal baby. Well, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gotta be about yeah. a baby. So they're gonna have a baby. Yeah. And I figure it's gonna be so, something's gonna happen. I don't know. Something <laughs> stupid. Sure. Side plot. Um, I also think that cousin and black friend will get married in mm. that one. Oh no! Here's what. Okay, this is what I think the side plot's gonna be. Prince is gonna be like. I'm having a baby. I need to know who my biological parents are. Ah. Okay. And then he's going to go on adventures to find them and keep missing stuff happening in the pregnancy because he's preoccupied. Sure. And then he's going to find out that his mom died, but his biological dad is still alive. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to be like, my real parents were my adopted parents all along, but his dad's going to be nice. His dad's going to be cool. His dad and the queen are going to hook up. Oh, snap. Because everybody needs to be paired off all the time. <laughs> yeah. And then they're going to have the baby and everyone's happy. So that's going to be the third movie. Uh-huh. The fourth movie. <laughs> they're going this they're going this far with the series. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the fourth movie is going to be called Christmas Princess. Oh. And it's going to be that the prince... Or the king and Amber decide that he needs to abdicate the throne because they want to raise a family and have normal kids. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be, they're going to try to change the law so princess can become queen. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's going to have some kind of love interest. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. That sounds just ridiculous enough. Yeah, Netflix, hire me. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, so that's what the next two movies are going to be. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then they could they could keep going and do, like, the, yeah, yeah. the Christmas Princess 5, which would be another royal baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was slightly better than a Hallmark movie. Yeah. But I do want to make it clear a couple things. I got my notes. Yeah, your, your notes. Each character is kind of introduced in a way where they tell you what their character is. <laughs> so when Amber is introduced, mm-hmm. she's basically like, oh, I'm a journalist and, <laughs> you and guys, I'm sassy. I'm yeah. sassy. You guys don't appreciate me. I'm very smart, though. I know all these. Ant- like, it's very like that, yeah. right? Um, they're on, it, it's like two steps away from looking directly into the camera and being like, hi, I'm Amber, I'm a sassy journalist. <laughs> uh, also, on a side note, I did not realize that her name was Amber until an hour into the movie. Right, like no one said her name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I covered everything else. This was just basically plot notes. Oh, I did make a prediction that didn't come true, though. Oh. If this was a Hallmark movie, this would have come true, but I predicted that Santa would cure the princess's uh, spinal bifida. Oh, snap. That'd be pretty far out there, yeah. But Wait, it, yeah. We're, we're, aside from it taking... Was there a Santa There is no Santa. There is no Santa connection, okay. That's how you know it's not a Hallmark movie. Yeah. Because Hallmark movies are like, like, oh, I need to win the ginger red contest <laughs> so that I can... Because I'm a single mom and... The rich millionaire who was hosting it was mean to me once. Yeah. No, I just... Really, <laughs> and then Santa brings her icing when she's doing uh, it, right? Yeah, like, it's gotta, something like that, right? No, I just was... Because the the country and <laughs> all the events were surrounding Christmas, I just wasn't sure if it was... If no, it was, was a just Santa a really fucking weird involved. country, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Made-up country. It just loves Christmas. So what was interesting about this movie was nothing but what was interesting surrounding this movie yeah. was that 
all of the women my age on Instagram, when I was looking through like Instagram stories, yeah. were all like, oh my god, watching Christmas prints for the second time we go <laughs> as Christmas fish now. Do you think everyone was being sarcastic? No. Oh, okay. I don't think any of them were being sarcastic. Because I know if you were to post that, you would be sarcastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like if I post anything, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> On a side note today, I posted, I was like going through old photos. Mm. Just speaking of posting things on Instagram, and I found a picture of me when I was six, when we were burying my hamster that died. Oh, no. My mom took a picture of it. <laughs> when I was standing outside yeah. in like rubber boots and like 90s leggings and a big oversized like neon jacket, sure. holding a shoebox and crying. Yeah. <laughs> my mom took a picture. <laughs> Precious memories there. Oh my god, so funny. <laughs> Back when it was filmed too, it's not even like a digital yeah, picture. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna waste money on this. <laughs> it's all um, precious memories. Yeah, so people actually really like this movie. I think it's because of the Princess Diaries nostalgia. Yeah. More than anything. Because it's just writing that kind of. Yeah. The line. <laughs> and it's romantic. Yeah, so say it's a romantic schmaltzy movie. People yeah. Are there, but I Meh. Um, I wouldn't watch it again. Sure. Unless it was like in a big group of people that we were all stoned, maybe. But that, <laughs> that's it, right? Yeah, like a best of the worst situation where you're kind of joking about the movie as you're watching it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I would recommend it though if, like, there's very specific circumstances. Sure. If you're like a mom, stay at home mom. Your kid's napping, you want to watch something while they're napping that you don't have to pay attention to. Great movie to do that, but you want to get in the Christmas spirit. Yeah. If you're home alone <laughs> and you're wrapping gifts and you want something playing or baking and you want something in the background but you don't have to pay attention to it, it's good for that. Yeah. If you're home alone <laughs> and you're lonely and you're sad huh. and you hate Christmas and you've drank like half a bottle of wine it's a good movie <laughs> to put on <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it okay <laughs> <laughs> or if you damn sure yeah definitely this, this is definitely going on the Netflix queue for me to watch <laughs> there was one thing that bothered me in the second movie and yeah. this is a very nitpicky thing the main character's hair never looked good <laughs> And it was... The okay. Amber character. Yeah, Amber. Okay. It was okay in the first one because she... I'm like, okay, I buy it. She's like journalist. Like, yeah, she, she's not always all about my looks and etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But in this one, like, there's this scene where they're doing the royal portrait and her hair looks like crap. Yeah, you're and like... And at her wedding, her hair looks like crap. <laughs> you're like, where's the royal hairdresser? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's like fancy wedding guy couldn't... Like wedding Yeah, didn't planner, arrange somebody. Didn't arrange that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just a side note. Yeah. Also, she wears, like, runners a lot. Mm. Like, she wears cons a lot. <clears throat> Which is... It's a lot of, like, surface-level character stuff. They're like, mm. how do we make her look down to earth? Let's put her in a in a cute skirt and sweater combo with Converse runners. Sure. And then when she gets married, she wears sparkly runners. <laughs> And then they're like, what else can we do? Oh, let's make her clumsy. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, how do we convey that she's a good person? Oh, well, she's not mean to the crippled kid. Good. She doesn't call the crippled kid crippled. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say what's up, creepy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I assume is what the previous nanny did. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but it's like very much like that through the whole movie. Like, yeah. how do we... How do we show that the housekeeper is stern? Well, we're going to introduce her as a stern housekeeper, Mrs. Housekeeper. Yeah, has a stuffy name. And yeah, like we're going <laughs> to do that. Like yeah. it was, I don't know. They used a lot of shorthand sure. in the whole movie and that's fine and it's expected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes like I was thinking of like there's some movies, yeah, like, okay, some there's like some kind of like the hair or like you say their shoes but everything else uh, rises above that so you're like whatever yeah okay your hair looks a little offish whatever yeah but, but you, it, like you're saying not everything rises above so then that becomes like stands out that you're like what's up with their hair <laughs> yeah well your hair looked worse than most people's hair day to day yeah 
that's what it was. That it was weird. like it was like she came to set <laughs> and they were like and they just didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like Alright. Yeah. And in the scene it was, <laughs> it was very distracting in the scene where they were doing the wedding portrait mm. because it didn't look like she was wearing any like stage makeup either. Right. Like she had big bags under her eyes and like even the prince like had big pores. Like mm. it's not usually a thing that I'm gonna like harp on. <laughs> but if it's for like a portrait scene, yeah. they should be both be wearing flawless makeup or you should put a filter on your camera. Or say or you have like some previous scene where they're like, Oh man, we're pretty stressed out because of all the things, but it's a portrait, we gotta look good. Yeah. And then they look good, and the, but there's but we know that the characters are stressed and yeah. whatever. No, it not, wasn't like that though. Horrible. They just looked not good. <laughs> yeah, they did. And like they, it wasn't just that they not didn't look good. It's that they, an Instagrammer with a ring light yeah. would have taken a better. Picture. I was just saying maybe one of the cameras they were using had technical difficulties that day, and they're like, we still got to shoot this scene. They're like, we got two weeks to shoot this movie. <laughs> we got a backup <laughs> camera. Let's get it in there. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it is, like, distracting when you, like, when you see YouTubers mm. who have better makeup and better yeah. filming equipment and better lighting than a movie. There's limited budgets. You gotta spend it where you spend it. <laughs> I don't, I guess they spend it all on location, which, yeah. again, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's fair. But, uh, yeah, they should have... They should have vast leaned up that camera lens or something because yeah. it did not look good. Get that old timey filter. Yeah. Everybody's all nice and blurry and glowy. Perfect. Get the the um. The old timey filter. So so hot for yeah. filter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're filming a lady. It's all blurry. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, perfectly in focus. Yeah. Lady is not. She's she's blurry and haloed. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, I was just saying, yeah, they mentioned it in, like, best of the worst for week. Yeah, like, Dr. Oh. McCoy, when you're filming him and he's so in focus, and he's, like, you see his pores. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know, like, that's, like, a nitpicky thing to sure. nitpick about, but it, it was very noticeable, because yeah. it looks like she got hit by a bus or something. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, and you would recommend, like you say, potentially both of them to those previous circumstances that you were talking about. Because, like, you yeah. watch the one, you might as well watch the sequel. And yeah, I mean, get, get primed for number three. <laughs> yeah, our royal baby. Yeah, so the royal And baby. then number four, the royal princess. Yeah. Or the Christmas princess, whatever yeah, I yeah. said earlier. Christmas princess, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is a franchise. This is happening? Yeah, well, we're going to turn it into a mini series. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't were there any like an actors or actresses that I would recognize? There were none that I recognized. Okay, fair enough. So that probably none that I recognized. Oh, either. I also appreciated all of the royals in Anchovia hmm. had British accents and they were actually British people. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, like if they were fake British accents, they were good enough that I couldn't recognize. Them. Right, or, or following up to that is so was this a European production then? Was made. I don't think so. Okay. Well, because Netflix probably. buys content from everywhere, so. No, 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 no. It was probably American or Canadian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> filmed, filmed in Vancouver, probably. <laughs> I was. I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm going to see some Vancouver scenes, but yeah. I didn't recognize any of the locations. That's fair, yeah. But that doesn't mean anything. That's true. Yeah. They can disguise Vancouver pretty well these days. That's true. <laughs> I think they just rented a hotel or castle. Or well, something. I was about to say some of those houses up on like the one side of Granville Street. Like that upper uh, past sixteen. Oh those yeah, all, like, those are really nice. And stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. where all the quick diplomats live and everything. <laughs> yeah. No, this wasn't a great movie, but it was watchable. No, it's okay. There you go. And the plot made more sense than Crimes of Grindelwald. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Which <laughs> Devin has been loving these days. <laughs> um, that movie. The more I think about it, the more mad I get. Yeah. Um, but like Crimes of Grindelwald. Mm. There weren't flashbacks, but all of the exposition was like, it's exposition time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. <laughs> Let me tell you the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. Nice. Yeah, there's no flashbacks, actually. Too expensive. Yeah. They got a higher whole set of different actors. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are better Christmas movies out there. Well, there, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> And and it lacked a bit of um like they were 
a better production value than Hallmark Christmas movies. Well, that's good. Like you said, but it lacks some Netflix. of the camp of those. Right. Right. Yeah. Which are it's never on purpose, but I find them funny. <laughs> well, and like I was saying previously, when I was looking through the list of Christmas movies, uh, one that came up a lot was called Black Christmas. Which oh yeah, is a Christmas horror movie from like the seventies, I believe. Like yeah, it's 70s. a remake, the original. I believe the yeah, the original from the seventies, really highly rated. But I just didn't feel like watching a Christmas horror movie. <laughs> but that's so. fair. And then it turns out Shane Black, who wrote like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, yeah, and, uh, like many of his movies all take place on Christmas. <laughs> so they show up in Christmas lists as well. Nice. <laughs> yeah, like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, uh, Die Hard. Oh really? Yeah, Lethal Weapon. Uh, they're all like they take place around Christmas. <laughs> Did Home Alone come up? Yes, of course. Did Home Alone two come up? Yes. Did Home Alone three come up? No. <laughs> no more Macaulay Culkin. That's right. Get that quality dip. There's um. Okay, <laughs> this is a side story time. Oh snap! Macaulay Culkin has a website and a podcast called Buddy Ears. Mm. They have merch. Uh-huh. One of their T-shirts <laughs> is. They've they have a few. One of them says Devin Sawa mm-hmm. with an arrow pointing out that Macaulay Culkin wears a lot. Uh-huh. And then another one says not Devin Sawa. <laughs> <laughs> and they did a publicity publicity stunt in like November where they made it look like Devin Sawa had hacked their website. Uh-huh. Um and then there's this back and forth on Twitter, Macaulay Culkin in the Devin Sawa shirt. Photoshops himself into Devin Sawa movie posters. Okay. And Macaulay Culkin, or Devin Sawa has been photoshopping his face into Macaulay Culkin posters. Right. I think I said that the right way and not the other. Yeah, they're, they're photoshopping yeah. each other, uh, themselves and the other into the other. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did a, he did a Home Alone oh, one on. recently, which is funny. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Home Alone's pretty classic, yeah. But uh, like I said, it, uh, it's not what I chose because I figured everyone has seen Home Alone or should have. So. Yeah, but it's, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, the first one especially. Yeah. Both of them are good. Yeah, the second one's decent, but it doesn't have that same classic feel as the first. Yeah, I think it's because the first one's more contained, right? Yeah. It's, it's all in the, the one house. house. Yeah. The other one's in New York and he's running around and such. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With a cameo from Donald Trump. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Our, the state's president. Yeah. Of the... Lol. <laughs> so weird, man. Yeah. We can wrap it up. Should we wrap it up? Sure. Like a gift? No, snap. Christmas? Actually, one of the elves, uh, <laughs> the elf that goes with them on the journey in Arthur Christmas, she's, her, she's, there's always time for a bow. <laughs> she's, she's, like, ribbon. Because she's, she's a rapper. She works in the rapper division. So nice. She's like, there's always time for a bow. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> got some ribbon on her. It's cute. Yeah. Do you have any Christmas plans? Are you going to go see your mom? Yeah, definitely. Cool. No. We're having Christmas here. It's our first oh, time really? hosting nice. Christmas dinner. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't go horribly awry. No, ah. it should be good. Yeah, but if it does, maybe Santa will save us. That's right. <laughs> say, no, I feel like if I could execute and cook a turkey dinner, so could you. Nah. No. Well, I'm thinking of... Oh, this is not interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of doing a Christmas roulade instead of an oh, entire yeah. turkey. So. That's classic, yeah. That's yeah. Good. Well, oh. I'll cut that out later. <laughs> no, leave it in. Leave it in. <laughs> they need to know. Hmm. Um, if you like this podcast, you can rate and review us on iTunes. Even if you don't like it, you can do that as well. Suppose, yeah. I think it helps people find us. Ah. Um, we're available on all the platforms of podcasts yeah or at our website which is tomeofuselessness.com we're also on instagram yeah tome of uselessness and um occasionally i post on twitter i posted two days in a row excellent useless underscore tome i believe it is just search tome of uselessness you'll find us (laughs) well and then i want to say as well uh thanks for listening this is the end of the year and then we'll be back in 2019 that's right. This is yeah. our last episode of the year. Last episode of the year. I hope everyone has a safe and happy Christmas. Christmas and, and holidays. New Year. Yeah. Don't drink and drive. Make good choices. Yay! Merry Yay. Christmas. Happy holidays. And see you next year.